what are you people doing? Now you're trying to destroy the Pope. What's going on? Uh, you didn't read about you or Peter and upon your rock, you're cutting that out of the gospel. I said, it's not in Mark's gospel. What do you mean? It's, I've always heard that. Yes, yeah, but she's quite right, because the only form we ever read of that was Matthew's one. But in Mark, Peter doesn't come to understand. And there is no praise of Peter. The disciples do not come to understand. It's a gospel that has its own horror of misunderstanding. Just let me read one passage because I think it's a classic passage to get the importance of looking on these gospels as separate entities. The, the passage that occurs after the multiplication of the loaves is in Mark. Uh, he's multiplied the loaves and the disciples go out in the boat and he's staying on the land and there's a storm. And uh, he comes walking to them across the sea. The fourth watch of the night he came to them, walking on the sea, he meant to pass them by. And they saw him walking on the sea, and they thought it was a ghost. And they cried out, for they all saw him, and they were terrified. But he immediately spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I, have no fear. And he got into the boat with them, and the wind ceased, and they were utterly astonished, for they did not understand about the loaves, and their hearts were hardened. That's Matthew's form of that story. Just let me read to you what Matthew, or that's Mark's form of the story. Just let me read to you what Matthew does with the same story. It's the same sequence. It comes walking the fourth watch of the night. They disciples saw him walking on the sea. They were terrified, saying, it is a ghost. And they cried out, notice, uh, Matthew doesn't put him in to pass them by. Uh, and he cried out. And even he said, take heart in his eye, have no fear. And then there's a little scene where Peter tries to walk to him and he has to pull Peter out of the water. But then he rejoins Mark. They got into the boat and the wind ceased and they all worshipped him saying, truly you are the son of God. See how different the ending of the same story is. One, utterly astounded. Their hearts are hard and they don't understand. The other, they worship it. What is going on? That Mark has his own purpose. He writes, we guess, for a community that has seen a lot of suffering and persecution, maybe for Rome, maybe the old tradition is true. It's a community that's seen Peter and Paul die. And many of them must have thought that was the end, because after all, God had spared Peter and Paul. How many times have they got away? And now Nero succeeds. It's not the church is going down the drain. We're defeated. Mark says no. Nobody can ever understand Jesus Christ without suffering. 